Hello and welcome to Ben Television News. I am Nkiru Obuni. First, the highlights. The embattled governor of Adamawa State, Muritala Nyako, impeached. National conference fails to reach a consensus on derivation as his rounds of plenary session. And the Church of England votes to allow women to become bishops. And in sports news, Brazil's coach Luis Felipe Scolari resigns his appointment. Now on the news. The embattled governor of Adamawa State, Murtala Nyako, has been removed from office as the State House of Assembly deliberated on the report of an investigative panel that probed allegations of financial misconduct against him. Earlier, the State Deputy Governor, Bala Angelari, resigned from office to avoid being impeached. Mr. Angelari's resignation letter was read at plenary by the Speaker of the Assembly, Omar Fintiri, after which the lawmakers approved it. Meanwhile, the former governor of Kwara State, Senator Bukala Saraki, has reacted to the impeachment of Adamawa State Governor, saying it portends danger for Nigeria's democracy. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Uh, and I think that uh, we are seven months to the end of the tenure. I think we all need to look at the bigger picture, look at the stability of our democracy, um, and look at, um, because uh, it's not only Adamawa, I hear that now Nasara has been served and three other states might be served. We all got to ask ourselves whether this is the interest of, uh, there are bigger issues addressed in this country now that need unity, the, the issue of, uh, major issue of security, the issue of uh, poverty, and I think some of these issues because uh, there's a very fine line. Some of the issues before the governor of Nasara can apply anywhere. And I think we really, really, really need to be matured about our democracy and look at the bigger picture. Um, I think with uh, six, how many months? I think six months of, to election. Honestly, this to me, I don't think this, is, this should be the priority. Now, the wind of impeachment blowing across the All Progressives Congress states is now hitting hard on Nasarawa State as the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Al Haji Musa Ahmed, directed the Clerk of the House to serve Governor Tanko Al Makura a notice of impeachment for gross misconduct. Our correspondent, Miwaba Midele, completes the report. With Governor Mutala Yaku out of the office, through impeachment processes. The question is who is next as Nasara State Governor Umaru Amakura appear to be the next on the line of impeachment armor. This may not be the best of time for all progressive Congress, the Nigerian main opposition party, as it's yet to recover from the loss of the AKT State Governorship election in which its flag bearer and incumbent governor Carry the fire me lost to the People Democratic Party candidate at your fire in the June 21, 2014 election. All attention is now shifted to the Lafia, the Nassau State Capital City, at the State Assembly issue impeachment notice to the governor for alleged gross misconduct. Meanwhile, the State Council of Traditional Rulers have stepped into the crisis to prevail and save the governor Amakura from being impeached. Only time will tell if Governor Umaru Amakura will survive as the clock of impeachment is already ticking. Muriwa Bamdele, Ben Television News, Abuja, Nigeria. The National Conference has failed to reach a consensus on derivation and has asked the federal government to set up a technical committee to address the contentious issues as the conference rounds off plenary session. The chairman of the conference, Justice Idris Kutigi, who had earlier met with about 50 member delegates, which lasted for over four hours to resolve the derivation principle, were unable to agree on the issue that necessitated the call for the meeting. The conference, therefore, recommends that the government should set up a technical committee to determine the appropriate percentage on the three issues and advise government accordingly. 
the majority of the delegates voted in support of the adoption of the report while some faulted the decision of the conference to refer the decision on derivatives and others to the federal government. The conference will, however, reconvene on August 4th to adopt the report of the conference before it is submitted to the federal government. And on the foreign scene, the Church of England has voted to allow women to become bishops for the first time in its history. Its ruling General Synod gave an approval to legislation introducing the change to required two-thirds majority. A previous vote in 2012 was backed by the houses of bishops and clergy, but was blocked by traditionalist lay members. Libya's main international airport has been hit by a new rocket attack a day after fighting forced it to close. At least one person has died and 12 planes have been damaged at the Tripoli airport. A government spokesman said Libya was considering calling for international forces to help re-establish security. The snails which are prohibited in the United States were found by Customs and Border Protection inspectors at the Los Angeles International Airport. They arrived from Nigeria and were intended for a person in California. The Moluks are among the largest land snails in the world and can grow up to 8 inches long, said officials. The U.S. Department of Agriculture put the snails in an incinerator after they were inspected because they can carry parasites that are harmful to humans, including one that can lead to meningitis. And Nigeria meets the criteria of ECOWAS single currency that will be in business news right after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back. The Deputy Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria on Economic Policy, Sarah Alade, says Nigeria meets all the criteria to adopt the ECOWAS single currency. Ms. Alade made this known at the 37th Technical Committee meeting of the West African Monetary Zones in Abuja. She said Nigeria is the only country in the region that has met the primary convergence criteria which were set for the member states in 2013. There are four primary criteria, including the attainment of a single digit inflation rate at the end of each year and a fiscal deficit of not more than 4% of gross domestic products. And now to entertainment. Renowned Nigerian playwright, dramatist, poet, essayist and first Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka turned 80 on the 13th of July 2014. Wale Shoinka has been an inspiration to many with his stellar creative books, inspiring words and speaking about issues concerning the nation. Series of media lectures were held to mark his 80th birthday with eulogies from various parts of the world. Walesha Inka was born in Abiokuta, Ogun State. Sir Ebenezer Obe has been made professor of music at the Olabisi Onabanjo University, Agoewe, Ogun State. The Juju icon was honored recently at the Otumbag Benga Daniel Hall at the institution by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Saburo Adejumo Adesanya. Obe was said to have presented musical instruments worth millions of naira to the Department of Music as part of his promise and commitment to the university. And now sports. More than 250,000 jubilant fans massed at Berlin's Brandenburg Gate Tuesday to welcome the World Cup winners and the new national heroes bringing home football's top prize for the first time to a reunified Germany. The flag-waving crowd erupted in applause as screens showed the flights bringing the triumphant players to the German capital from Rio de Janeiro, it touched down. 
Crowds began massing in central Berlin before dawn and thousand more supporters gathered on a viewing platform on the warm summer sunshine at Tegel Airport to meet the plane. Brazil's coach Luis Felipe Scolari has resigned. The country's football federation has confirmed this. 65-year-old Scolari, who won the tournament in 2002, could only finish fourth at this year's World Cup tournament. Brazil was trashed 7-1 by Germany in the semi-finals and then lost 3-0 to the Netherlands in the playoff. Luis Felipe Scolari and his fellow coaching staff surrounded, surrendered rather their positions to the board the football body has confirmed. And that's the much we can take on Ben Television News. I am Kiru Obuli. Thanks for watching.